Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 48. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what to bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. But the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. But they could not find any way to do it, because all the people hung on his words. It always seemed to me like one of the easier Bible stories, Palm Sunday, Jesus on the donkey, palm branches, cheering crowds, nice. The Palm Sunday is a lot more complicated than that, a lot more complicated than it looks. We've got obedience, questioning, celebration, symbolism, praise, opposition, sadness, anger, plotting. And it's noisy and confusing as well, since it took place at the same time as a major Jewish festival, the Passover. So Jesus gives his disciples an odd command. Go and get a donkey from the next village. Did they understand? Who knows? We don't know, but we do know they were obedient and went. Not everything in the Christian life will make sense to us all the time. And sometimes we just have to trust God and follow his commands. At the donkey's village there were questions. Why are you untying the donkey? We often face questions as Christians, put to us by others or put to ourselves. We can't answer every question but we can answer some. With God's help be ready to try with the rest and there's no shame in not being able to answer a question. And we have the crowd celebrating and covering the road with their cloaks. Now we do have a genuine reason to celebrate in the Christian life um, because of Jesus and because of what he's done for us, but we don't always feel like celebrating, even though deep down we know that Jesus is a reason for celebration because he changes lives. So we can and do and will celebrate, but let's be ready to acknowledge that we don't always feel like celebrating and that's okay. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was deeply symbolic. He was riding 
a donkey, the royal animal of uh, the Jewish king. And he was being welcomed into the capital city as a victor. Palm branches laid on the road. And symbols can help us to think about our Christian faith, whatever our faith background, our denomination might be. Symbols can be very visual and make things clear to understand. And one which you could say is perhaps common to all Christian denominations uh, is the bread and the wine of communion. Because those symbols help us to remember the body and blood of Jesus and what that meant. On Palm Sunday, lots of people were shouting their praises to God. They praised God, we read, for all the miracles they had seen. They think about what they'd seen as well as what was happening at that moment. And I believe praising God is very important for our spiritual health. It kind of gives us a, a boost and a sense of well-being in a way that we can't imagine. Praising God puts the attention where it should be, on our Creator, our Saviour, our Friend. Praising the great God also reminds us who is alongside us in life. In, Psalm, in the Psalms uh, we read that uh, in one translation that God inhabits the praises of Israel and there's a sense in which we can really feel ourselves closer to God through praising and through uh, acknowledging him and what he has done. It didn't go all Jesus' way, they did it on Palm Sunday, despite all this celebrating and praising, there was opposition. The Pharisees tried to calm it all down, didn't they? Um, telling Jesus to keep his disciples quiet. Impossible, said Jesus. Even the stones would cry out their praises. Now, we shouldn't be looking to provoke opposition, um, but facing it is a likely consequence of following Jesus. And in these moments, we can draw strength and grace from God, the God who promises to never leave us and never forsake us. And Jesus himself found the joy tempered with sadness as he continued, because we read that he wept over Jerusalem. Jesus knew its people weren't ready to recognise what it was that would bring them peace. They weren't at that place where they could recognise him as God's Messiah and receive God's peace and wholeness and reconciliation. And likewise, we may be misunderstood or uh, experience um, sad times. And perhaps in such moments, we can find reassurance in knowing that God always has a plan and purpose for us and will give us comfort and hope. Even when it's difficult to see that, to discern that, to feel that, we can't find encouragement, reassurance, you know, that God really does have a plan and a purpose for us. And finally, we ought to talk about anger. There's quite a lot of anger in this story, isn't there? Some of it from Jesus, and more of it from the religious leaders. And we could talk about the different kinds of anger that people express um, righteous and appropriate anger or um, unrighteous and uh, hateful anger but anger there was but also plotting he was angry about the misuse of the temple as a house of prayer it wasn't the place of worship uh, that it should have been and he wanted honesty integrity in that place where God was being honoured the religious leaders, they were angry because they feared for their own position and they worried about the status quo. They wanted to get rid of Jesus, but we don't really know if they tried looking for an alternative to their concerns. Had they thought of other ways in which they could uh, express their concerns, find ways of um, keeping the status quo with the Roman occupiers or whatever it might be. Well, they asked themselves if there was another way. And uh, maybe that's a, a thought that we can uh, uh, ponder ourselves, you know, when we find ourselves in these tight and difficult and even extreme situations. Is there 
another way we can approach this. So Palm Sunday, it's a lot more complicated than it looks. But what might it mean for us now? What might it mean for today's followers of Jesus? Well, let's reflect on that by considering the story of the donkey. And this is a story called Only a Donkey. And it's by Wayne Rice uh, with a few little embellishments from me. The donkey awoke. His mind was still enjoying the memory, the most exciting day of his life. Never before had he felt such a rush of pleasure and pride. He walked into town and found a group of people by the well. I'll show myself to them, he thought. But they didn't notice him. They wanted him fetching their water and ignored him. Throw your garments down, he said crossly. Don't you know who I am? They just looked at him in amazement. Someone slapped him across the tail and ordered him to move on. Miserable people, he muttered to himself. I'll go back to the market where the good people are. They'll remember me. The donkey went back to the market, but the same thing happened. No one paid any attention to the donkey as he strutted down the main street in front of the marketplace. The palm branches, where are the palm branches? He shouted, yesterday you threw palm branches. Hurt and confused, the donkey went home to his mother. Don't be upset, she said to him gently. Don't you realize that without Jesus, the people see it as just an ordinary donkey? Well, without wanting to stretch the parallel too far, uh, you could say that we're like the donkey. We're most fulfilled as people when we're in the service of Jesus. We're most fulfilled when we're in the service of Jesus. We're most alive. We're most alive when we're in his presence. We're most alive and full and fully who we can be and who we are when we're in the presence of Jesus. When we lift up, Jesus would become part of God's plan to redeem the world. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that we are part of your plan to redeem the world, not because of any benefits or merit we have ourselves, but because we are followers of your son Jesus and by grace we can be uh, part of uh, his work in helping people to be reconciled to one another and most importantly to be reconciled to you. So help us to have confidence in who we are as followers of Jesus, help us to be faithful in serving him and help us to be joyful knowing that he is with us. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Take care. God bless you.